It is week 11 here in the Jonathan Crompton Coach Mode Dynasty here with uh, college football revamped mod fully installed. And this week, the Akron Zips will be taking on Ohio, of course, Crompton, the offensive coordinator. And this is a big MAC game. They're all big from here on since we started off our MAC schedule with a loss to Central Michigan. So we can't really afford to lose anymore. Uh, let's go look at the top stories from around the country. First of all, Ohio State leading off their win over Maryland means that they're still alive for a Big Ten championship and, of course, college football playoff appearance. Still got some ground to cover, but a big win there. Oklahoma continues their perfect 8-0 mark with a conference win against TCU as the Sooners pretty much double up TCU, 56-27. Big offensive showing there by Oklahoma. When it counts, Michigan walks away with a conference victory against number three Michigan State. It was the Wolverines with a 31-24 win over Michigan State. Big second quarter by Michigan. 24, outscored the Spartans 24-7. And then would hang on from there to win by a touchdown. Uh, showdown Saturday, Ohio State versus Michigan State. Tops the list of big games this weekend. Top 10 matchups. Two teams trying to stay alive for a Big Ten title. And in a fight for survival, Tigers seek to take control of the ACC. Clemson will be playing at Florida State this weekend. Another big top 10 matchup there. Conference crush, TCU and Baylor prepare for war. Baylor trying to get into the playoff. Disrespect to the latest polls have little love for the 7-0 Tigers. Mich or Memphis has uh, won all their games, including a win at Cincinnati. That's a big win uh, for the Tigers. They have one Power 5 win over Duke, 42-16. Well, Memphis feels disrespected all the way down to number 12 with an undefeated record. Overtime stunner Stanford is outclassed in conference play by Oregon, 50-47 to 47 in overtime. That is a look at the top stories. What about the top 25? Alabama, still number one. Oklahoma, Florida State, top three remain unchanged. However, with Michigan State's loss, we see Iowa and Baylor both move up a spot. Michigan, after their win over Michigan State, jumps up to number six. This is the college football playoff rankings. Ohio State is seven. Utah is eight. Michigan State fell to number nine. Clemson is number 10. Number 11, NC State, after a win at North Carolina. Memphis beats Cincinnati. They're number 12. Maryland falls to number 13. Arkansas beats Auburn, so they are now number 14. App State, also unbeaten. They're number 15 in the playoff, but at the coaches' polls, you can see up there, they are ranked number 11. Houston ranked number 16. Cincinnati falls to 17. Notre Dame with a big win over Navy. They are number 18. USC moves up to number 19. North Carolina, 20. Georgia, 21. They were off. Florida, 22. And Ole Miss, 23. Arizona State, 24. And Texas is number 25 after their loss to Kansas State. They were uh, knocked off there by the Wildcats. And look at the Heisman watch. Ja'Shawn Corbin still leads. He's the big leader now. Tank Bigsby, though, you got to imagine that that's going to be an interesting race moving forward. Uh, Bigsby did have more yards on the ground than Corbin this week. But right now, Florida State, if you go by how well the two teams are performing, Florida State ranked number three. Uh, Auburn, meanwhile, is unranked. So that is a big, uh, that, that might be the difference. Let's talk about conference standings real fast. Uh, obviously, we are 3-1 and one now. We're in sole possession of first place. Miami, Ohio, Kent State, Buffalo, Ohio, Bowling Green. Uh, round out the, the, the uh, standings there in the east. Uh, this week, of course, we're playing Ohio. Chance for Ohio to kind of get back into the race. If they have any chance of winning, they'll have to win today. Um, but it's important for us to, to keep pace and stay ahead of these other guys. We had a big win over Miami, Ohio. But we still have to play Kent State. We still have to play Buffalo. And so we need um, we need to keep winning to just stay ahead of our competition there. In the West, Central Michigan leads. However, Toledo is also 3-1. I don't think they've played yet. No, they play very late in the season. So, uh, yeah, interesting race developing there. Meanwhile, all four of the other teams are all 2-2. Two two. So there's literally, I mean, everybody has a great chance to win the West as of right now. Uh, looking at the rest of the around the country, uh, I'm going to kind of just whatever, skip through a little bit through the um, uh, group of five teams. Let's look at the Power Five. Stanford right now uh, leads the North, and they probably are going to win the North. After eight games in conference play, they're 6-2. and two. Washington's 3-3. Three three. They're only a game behind in losses, 
But uh, three wins. Let's see who won their conference matchup. Yeah, so Stanford has... Yes, I mean, Stanford's won the division. Nobody can catch them, I don't think. Let's see if Oregon... Well, now Oregon. Oregon could catch them if Oregon wins out. Cal, Washington State, at Washington, Oregon State. Oregon could still win the division. They're the only team capable, and even they would need Stanford to lose to Cal. So uh, Cal, or Stanford, is definitely in control. In the South, USC and Utah. Um, Right now, uh, your top teams, let's see who won the regular. USC won, so they got the tiebreaker. So Utah needs USC to lose their last conference game. In the SEC, Georgia and Florida are at the top, but Florida beat Georgia. So if the Gators can win their last two conference matchups against South Carolina and Missouri, uh, they will win the division. Um, Vanderbilt still, I guess, kind of has an outside shot. No, they lost to Florida. They did beat Georgia, so things could get interesting if they went out. Uh, Tennessee, I don't think they have a chance. They beat Florida. And lost to Georgia. So things could get really crazy in the SEC. Uh, and least in the Eastern Division. In the West right now, Alabama in firm control. They play Mississippi State, A&M, and Auburn to finish the season. Uh, obviously, those are decent teams. So and I guess that they have to lose two. Um, and they already beat Ole Miss. I think they beat Arkansas. Auburn and Mississippi State are the only two that can catch them. That race is probably over uh, in the Sun Belt. Sorry, Appalachian State uh, leads there. They're probably going to win that. ACC Atlantic, Florida State right now. Their competition is NC State and Clemson. They've already beaten NC State. They play Clemson this week. That will tell, um, that will probably kind of decide if they can win. And you know, we could see a three-way tie, I guess. Didn't NC State, yeah, NC State beat Clemson. So the Atlantic is, you know, coming down to the wire. It's going to be interesting there. Uh, in the Coastal, you got two teams with two losses, Virginia and North Carolina. Uh, the two teams play in a couple weeks, so that could be the decider there, although Pittsburgh is lurking. Um, they might still have somewhat of a chance. They lost to North Carolina, and so Pittsburgh is probably out. They lost to both of the, these top two teams. Uh, American Conference C, Memphis, SMU are at the top there. Oops, and I should have known that the Big 12 is still 10 teams. Uh, Oklahoma and Baylor, interestingly, both on beaten. They will play this week, or is it next week? I'm not sure. Uh, five, it may be next week. Uh, in any case, they have, their next game is against each other, so that could be a big, uh, well, big matchup decider. TCU still has to play Baylor. Um, yeah, so that's the Oklahoma Baylor game is the next week. This week it's TCU Baylor. That could uh, well TCU looks at they had to go back to back against Oklahoma Baylor. Tough schedule there for them, um, but TCU still has a shot. They still have a shot, and you know maybe these two lost teams might still have a shot. Also in the Big Ten in the East, Ohio State leads over Maryland and Michigan. Although obviously they still have to play Michigan. Um, Michigan, meanwhile, plays Ohio State at the end. How is this possible? Did they... Where is their Maryland game? Michigan. Maryland beat Michigan and lost to Ohio State. I must have missed the... Yeah, it's right there. Terps. Their, their abbreviation is Terps. Okay. So, uh, Michigan needs to beat Ohio State. Maryland needs Michigan to beat Ohio State. Um, yeah, still a lot to be decided there because you've got Michigan State working also. So you got a, a four-way log jam in the Big Ten East. In the West, Iowa looks like they're going to run away with it again. They pretty much always win this division. They still have to play Rutgers, Illinois, and Nebraska, and they're in the top four. So uh, they've got a decent shot. Um, Conference USA in the East right now, Mitsu in a three-way tie with the Florida schools, FIU and Florida Atlantic. So big, um, yeah, the last few games will decide that meanwhile in the west uab north texas both undefeated uh they will be playing each other not this week but the next week so that'll be um a big game there in conference usa west independence notre dame seven and two byu is five and three army is one and eight who did army get a win against air force of course uh byu uh lost to auburn wake and vanderbilt uh, they get a big win against USC. Van, uh, Notre Dame's losses are Florida State and Michigan. They've won six in a row, though, so they're um, 
Yeah, they're kind of they're, they've got a, they're on a winning streak heading into the last couple games against App State and USC. A couple big matchups there. Um, all right, so there you go. That is a look at the copper standings. Let's talk about recruiting real quick before we jump into the details about Ohio. Well, in recruiting news, uh, we got another uh, commitment. Brendan Pendleton, a strong safety. That's a big get because we've got a lot of needs in the secondary, so that helps. Um, also got a couple players who are ready to visit. Andrew Garcia, defensive end, another area of, not, I wouldn't say urgent need, but, you know, of need. Uh, Daryl Gross, wide receiver. That is an era, area of urgent need. And then... Um, I think it was it. Yeah. So those two guys are, are going to be visiting. I'm I'm going to see if I can get them in this week. But if if there's going to be a penalty, I might hold that off. I'll, I'll kind of have to look at that situation. But obviously, big news in recruiting. Tim Albin is the Ohio head coach. He, uh, for a long time, was on the Frank Solich staff, both at Nebraska and at Ohio. And he was promoted a couple of years ago. And he'll be running, of course, Ohio Playbook, Ohio Pistol. Uh, he is from the uh, Frank Solich school. Uh, and then the defensive playbook, they run a 4-3. So that's what we can expect uh, scheme-wise out of Ohio. Their starting quarterback is named Curtis Rourke. He's a junior, 77 overall. Their running back is an 80. They have a 71 backup, decent speed. Uh, fullback is 48. Uh, wide receiver is not so great, 75, 70, 70, 71, although we can expect them to run the ball more. Got some decent tight ends, 75, 72. Left tackle, 70. Left guard, 82. Center's only a 69. Right guard is a 69, but he's injured. He'll be replaced by Atkinson, who's a 68. Right tackle's a 76. Their offensive line is okay. Their number one defensive end on the left side is injured. He'll be replaced by a 74, Malinchek. And Dugan is a 77. Defensive tackle, 77, 73. So they're decent up front. Um, you know, not great, but enough, good enough to cause us problems. Uh, left outside linebacker 78 middle is an 80 and on the right is a 79 uh, secondary is okay 78 71 70 not you know not terrifying speed um, free safety 76 strong safety is a 74 so their defense is solid all over there's no real weaknesses there may not be any outstanding players but there's um, there's no uh, uh, kinks in the armor from what it looks like uh, kicker is only a 60, so that'll actually well, a rare a kicking advantage. Uh, punter is a 65. So that's a look at the Ohio State depth chart. Let's jump into the highlights. And as we look at the team stats here, Ohio, they're 3-5, and 1-3 and three overall. Uh, offensively, they do appear to be a little bit more of a passing team, which is kind of a surprise. I guess I'd still think of them as, as that Frank Solich uh, style. Maybe they've just been forced to pass. I don't know. But they rank kind of in the middle, you know, in all those categories. Defensively, their defense has not been great. Um, they're especially bad against the rush, 116th overall. Their uh, yardage-wise, their defense ranks 108th points, 100th. So hopefully that means we can move the ball. We've got a lot of prospects in. Here's some of our top ones, the biggest, Ryan Shackelford. If I could just get him, that would really make me feel good about playmakers for next season. Uh, he'll, he'll probably step right in and contribute with our receiving core. Uh, top players for us, of course, are Slaney and Watts and Irons, the quarterback. He is now, uh, I guess he's moved past um, Matheson. Uh, top players away, Danner, their left guard. Their running back, Allison, is injured. Uh, we'll look at see how bad it is in just a moment. And then their the middle linebacker, Blouser. Uh, he'll be the guy that we are going to see the most of, right? Our number 33. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Uh, as we look, Matheson is still probable, and he's been playing, so there's no reason he shouldn't be playing. But you look at there, guys. Um, Johnson now for the season. Defensive end um, Taylor is questionable. That probably means he won't play. So those are the two guys for us to worry about. So let's g go to the field. And it's snowing here in Akron Infocision Stadium as uh, Ohio, hoping that works to their advantage in their white uniforms to kind of blend into the background. Uh, this is a big game. Ohio trying to stay alive for a division title. They're not out of it yet, but this is a game that they would have to win to have a chance. Meanwhile, we're trying to keep those other schools at arm's length. A win here would um, be a big one. Go another divisional win, get us a step closer to the MAC championship game, which I believe we played at Ford Field in Detroit. Um, good chance, a good second season for Crompton and as the offensive coordinator here. Uh, and here come the zips onto the field. I did, uh, it's been a couple days, and I kind of had this little project where I was simplifying my playbook. I didn't overhaul anything. I just, I had a lot of formations that I weren't using. 
And so I just decided to take my core concepts and um, just, you know, like I said, simplify it from a, uh, at least from a formational standpoint, to still run all the same concepts, um, but uh, just, you know, whatever, made things, made, made the uh, uh, interface a little easier for me as we get ready to start this game here against the Ohio Bobcats. Clock is winding down here for Akron. Irons throws it across the middle. That's complete. Tony Grimes Jr., 16 yards. That'll be an Akron first down. That's going to be the end of the first quarter. And we are scoreless. These two offenses really struggling in the snow today. Akron has the ball, but it's second and long here. We'll see if they can make something happen on this drive and take the early lead. Second and 13 from the 42. Heil blitzes. Pass away, and that is complete, and that'll be enough for the first down. That's Michael Matheson with the 15-yard reception. Big play there on second and long. Looked like just kind of a post route, or it was the crossing route. That was the cross. It was Y cross. He makes the catch in space and able to get across the line to gain. So nearing the red zone here is Akron. They're going to hand this one off up the middle. John Zell, huge hole right there. He picks up 15 yards. That will be an Akron first down. So third and 11 from, I believe it's the 13. Irons throws quick to his left. It's complete. Grimes gets off a couple tackles and he gets it down to the inches line. It'll be first and goal. Big, tough run there after the catch by Grimes. First and goal. Got kind of a new uh, goal line formation here. Irons looks. He's going to run for it and he'll trot into the end zone. Touchdown, Akron. DJ Irons. Couldn't find anybody open. Had plenty of space in front of him. So he takes off. See that hole develop right there to his left. Gets it in, and Akron jumps into the lead. Second down and 13. Irons to throw. Throws to his left, and it's complete. Mumfield keeps his feet in bounds on a 19-yard reception. Big throw there by Irons. So third and 12. Line to gain is the 31. Irons lets it go, and it's complete! But there's a flag. Please don't be holding. It is a roughing the passer. That will move the ball even further. And this is going to be a handoff to Norrells right up the gut. He gets it down to about the inch line, first and goal. Third and goal from the six. Akron trying to push the lead to two touchdowns. Pass across the middle is complete, and Mumfield gets it across the line. And Akron scores again. It's now 13-0 with the extra point on the way. In weather like this, a two-touchdown lead might be an insurmountable deficit as Mumfield works hard to get that across the goal line. So that'll bring us to the end of the first half. It's, uh, yeah, both teams kind of trying to slodge along through the snow as Akron has managed to get into the end zone a couple times to take a 14-0 lead at this point. Uh, but uh, obviously, Ohio, you know, if they can just make a couple plays here and there, they're right back into it as Akron has struggled a little bit. Uh, Irons has not been on target all day, and then the offensive line has been the Akron offensive line. Uh, as Ohio has been able to. Uh, we knew that would happen. We knew that they were good enough to cause us problems up front, and they have made a few plays and gotten a few sacks that has kept the uh, Akron offense behind the chains, but Irons has made enough plays to be able to score. Uh, John Zell Norris has had a good game running the football. We'll look at the stats here in a moment. As we see, passing yards, Akron, only 119. That's not, you know, up to snuff what they usually do. They do have 54 yards rushing. Uh, John Zell Norris has 71, which means that Williams and uh, Irons have lost 17 yards rushing. Meanwhile, Ohio only has 56 yards of total offense. So if Ohio wants to have a chance, uh, they're going to have to start. They're going to have to figure out how to move the ball here in the snow. Ohio showing blitz. Irons is going to run for it. He slips a tackle. He'll have the first down. And he picks up 12 yards on that carry. That will be an Akron first down from the 32. 
Handoff up the middle. This is Norrells. Breaks a tackle. He'll have the first down. More hard running from John Zell. Right now, he is really kind of carrying the Akron offense. First and 10, and in trouble. Irons gets the pass away, though. It's complete to George Quarles. He picks up 13, and it'll be first and goal. Second and goal. Irons to throw. Ohio brings a blitz, but they pick it up, and that's a touchdown to Kanata Mumfield. Seven yards. That's his second of the game. Irons' is second toss of the game. And Akron now pushes the lead out to 20 to nothing with the extra point on the way. So first and 10, Irons to throw here. And quick hitch to Ognetovich, the tight end. He breaks a tackle. He'll end up with a first down. Second and nine. Back to throw is Irons. He is going to run for it. He'll have the first down if he hangs on to the ball, and he does. Picks up 11. It's now first and goal. So, third and goal. Williams back in, and Ohio gets to him this time. He'll lose nine yards. He stumbles. So, this will be Smeagol to attempt the field goal to push Akron's lead up to 24. And the kick is up, and he got it. So, Akron now up 24 to nothing on Ohio. The Bobcats only have about five minutes to get back into this. And so that'll do it. This is, was not your typical Akron performance, at least not in the Crompton era, but they get they get it done. 24 to nothing, a shutout win. That's two shutouts Akron's had this year. And uh, yeah, so uh, today it was the, the uh, credit goes with the run game into the defense as the running game had well over 150 yards and passing game struggled at times. And uh, it was just a rare game where the offensive line, while obviously it wasn't perfect, they gave up a few plays here and there, really controlled things. And they made it possible for Norrells and Williams to get some gashing runs. That would lead to this 24 to nothing win over the Ohio Bobcats. Very important win. This will push Akron to five and four, four and one in the MAC, with only three more MAC contests remaining in this season. Kind of hard to believe that we're that far along. But uh, this was a, uh, an important win, a uh, win that the Zips had to have as they make their way towards what is hopefully a MAC championship game. And look at the game stats here, 24 to 0, first down 22 to 9, total offense 349, but you look at the rushing yards, 176 yards rushing. We almost had 100 more yards rushing than the opponent. That's very rare. So Ohio ends up with 78 yards on the ground. Uh, they only had 81 yards passing. We managed to get 173. Uh, so we almost we almost outgained Ohio on, by 200 yards. Uh, no turnovers by either team, uh, but look at that third down conversions. Ohio 0 for 11. We weren't great, four for four out of 10. It's not that's not terrible, but it's not great. Um, but Ohio could not convert a single third down. On fourth down, they were one for three. So I guess a little credit uh, where it's due there. Um, yeah, we're starting to cut down on those holding penalties. We saw that today. Again, that, that goes into offensive line's performance today. Got to give them credit. Uh, Iron, 16 of 26, 173 yards. Not his best game. He got sacked five times. He was off target several times. And today we were really just taking what the defense gave us as Norrells. Look at that. 20 carries, 141 yards. His um, most productive performance. No touchdowns. But it, um, he was an important workhorse today. DJ Irons, 11 carries for 12 yards. Anthony Williams carried the ball nine times for 22 yards. Uh, so it was a big, big game uh, rushing, running the ball for us. Um, still a decent receiver distribution. Mumfield caught five passes. He had two touchdowns, 67 yards. Matheson and Grimes each had three catches for a little over 30. Uh, Qualls caught a couple of balls. So, you know, like we, we distributed the ball uh, you know, pretty well, um, considering we did not throw the ball as much as we usually do. Kicking Smigel, one for one field goals, uh, three for three. That'll hopefully help his confidence. Uh, he's a junior. He's got one more year with us, so hopefully next year he'll come in and be ready to contribute. So a uh, big win for Akron. Uh, not the most uh, pleasing to the eye performance, but it was enough to get it done as we win 24-0. to zero. Uh, This is Vol Force 1 signing off. Make sure you tune in to see if we can keep this going.